I'm a pro player and whatever your best foot champion score is this year, with these seven tips, I'm gonna help you absolutely smash that record and reach your new personal best. Tip number one is to have a backup formation and an all out attack formation. So here, my first formation is a five for one, my backup formation is my four three two one and my all out attack formation is four two four. In this foot champions game here, I started off in the five four one with then four one down in the 40th minute using that five for one. So ultimately you need to change something up, which is why I've got my backup formation. I then changed this to the four three two one and as you can see in the 90th minute we go on to win the game 5-4 purely because we've changed something again with the all-out attack formation if you are losing with 10-15 minutes to go if you do concede again so be it but at least you've gone for the game and everything like that but here again i'm losing this game in extra time i then go for it again with the all-out attack formation 4-2-4 we then go and get the ball back because we've got team press constant pressure really high depth on win the ball back we've got so many options going forward that we outnumber their players and we go on the score and then we take the game to penalties and we win the game on penalties so having those two things set up can really change a game for you and lead to more wins tip number two track runners and what i mean by that is when you're defending and your opponent's player is running behind your defensive line you must track them with either your center back or your fullback depending on where obviously that player is run with them sounds really simple but i see so many people decide to just actually run towards the ball instead and obviously if you don't make that tackle your opponent's got a free one-on-one -on -one because you haven't decided to track it so don't worry about the ball holder worry about that player that is running in behind you. You'll see from the examples on the screen here that I leave the ball holder alone and I always track that runner until I feel like the player on the ball can no longer play that pass and then all danger is just then eliminated and if they do decide to play that pass you're going to be there anyway and you're more than likely going to win the ball. This brings me on very nicely to my third point which is about triggering L1 or LB runs. This makes your players go on a run forward and as we've just spoken about players just don't track runners. I don't know why but if we can obviously help exploit that we're going to by sending players on a run forward if they aren't going to track it we can then obviously send a through ball and over the top through ball or we can just use it to create more attacking options for us which ultimately we've got more attacking options we're going to overload our opponent and gonna have a lot better chance and success rate of scoring goals you'll see from the examples that have been on this screen here that i'm sending runners through my players on the wing through players up front doesn't mean you have to use them at all but it means that you can stretch your opponent or for example if they do track that run then your obviously other players will be more freed up because they can only defend one player at once so make sure to use those l1 or lb runs depending on your console and you're going to give yourself a lot more chance of scoring goals i'm just going to interrupt the video quickly to tell you that i do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching and i believe i'm one of the only professionals who are currently playing at the highest level to be offering coaching whether you're in the elite division division 10 anything in between or whether you just play casually online with your mates or on seasons or anything like that I will make it my mission to help you improve at FIFA. Set into at £15 per hour. And if you are interested in further details, please message me. My social medias are in the link in the description. Back to the video. Okay, so we've now set up our formations. We know how to track runners. I'm going to have to send players on runs. Now it's time to learn the top two skill moves which are going to help you improve when it comes to foot champions. Number one is speed boost step overs. Firstly, go over to your controller settings and turn your analog sprint to off. The reason for this is because the speed boost will not happen with these step overs unless you have it on off. Once we now go into the practice arena, you can see to do the step over, whatever direction your player is facing, point your right stick in that direction and perform a semicircle. This can be either way. Once we've done that, your player will start to obviously do step overs, but not very quickly. So that's how to do the step overs. But in order to do the speed boost step overs that I've been talking about, you need to press down the sprint button and the left stick in the direction your player is facing at the same time and then you'll get the speed boost. When we're going into a game, the best place to use this is when you're either on the shoulder of your opponent's defense, because once you perform that, your opponent's defender's got absolutely no chance of catching you, or if there is a big gap there to obviously be taken advantage of, which you can then obviously then perform the speed boost step over, and you'll be again flying through. The second skill move is the reverse elastico. To do a reverse elastico, to keep it really simple, whatever direction your player is facing, pretend you're drawing a semicircle from your player's left foot to his right foot in an anti clockwise direction and that will be able to perform the reverse of that code no matter what the angle or direction you're facing on the pitch i'll let some of the examples play through so you can have some of a visual sort of aspect of how to best use it but the best place to use it and sort of really the only place to use it is inside the box when you're sort of on that player's shoulder again so it just allows you to do a quick sort of turn around that player and almost have like a nine out of ten chance of scoring every single time okay so point number five is about time finishing and the low driven shot i'll let the examples play through so you can obviously see the best scenarios to use them but 
to be able to do them for time finishing, you need to go into your controller settings and make sure that your setting is turned on. Once that setting is turned on and we're in the game, you can obviously power up your shot as per normal, but you need to press shoot for a second time. And that second time has got to be just before your player is about to kick the ball. And if you can get that timing right, you'll time it green, which adds that extra accuracy, extra power. And you'll see from the examples that it's an absolute rocket into the corner of the goal. For a low driven, there's actually nothing sort of special that you need to do for it, apart from you need to power your shot between one to one and a half bars. And the ball just sort of just roll along the floor and the keeper just can't seem to get near it at all for whatever reason. And that is pretty much it. So make sure to get time finishing low drivens into your game. It will take a bit of time to sort of practice them. But once you get into your game, the amount of chances that you'll be able to sort of score will go up by so much. Okay, so point number six is about making super subs. And I just wanted to brush up on the fact that you can make five substitutions whilst playing in and when I play against people in foot champs, they don't seem to utilize the most stats. So it's just something just to remind you to bring on all five subs and the importance of it. Because when your players are in that 65th, 70th minute, they've obviously sort of gone down to maybe 65 or 70 stamina. If you can bring on all five subs or bring on two in the, say, the 60th minute and then three in the 70th minute, you're going to have half your team of, would have gone from being on that sort of low stamina all the way to 99 stamina. And that can literally be the difference between winning and losing. The best places that I find to bring on subs is in the wide attacking areas. So say in the 4 3 2 1 in the left forward and right forward role, and then say the left back and the right back. Okay, so we're now on to point number seven where it is play for last attack. You'll see the example on the screen here. I have just dispossessed my opponent in the 87th minute. A lot of people just go forward as normal here, but if you get dispossessed and they go down the other end and score, you've literally got no time to be able to get back into the game. This is where we need to be clever. And obviously, here I am passed around the back just a little bit, but I'm just letting the clock sort of almost run down a little bit until the time of obviously when I do go forward. And if they they do obviously dispossess me that we'll go into extra time anyway and we'll have an added 30 minutes to obviously play out the game but in this scenario here I do go forward because obviously there's no risk to it we go forward and we actually score so something just to keep in mind when you do play that if you do have three four minutes left keep possession of that ball wait until there's literally no time left if you score that's absolutely brilliant if you don't obviously that means you can just go into extra time as per normal and not concede a late added goal and this brings me on to my final point which is playing against constant pressure throughout your weekend you're going to have matches where you're winning by a goal or two and then say 10 15 minutes left your opponent's going to put on constant pressure team press everything right to get back into the game but from my experience these top three tips have helped me a lot in closing out those games where maybe constant pressure obviously gets your opponent back into the game and then an extra time on penalties they win and obviously we want to prevent that so number one use the wings and the reason for that is it seems like constant pressure swarms the middle a lot more than it does the wings so trust me on this one play at your left back your right back your wide midfielders whoever's out wide and the press will be a lot less than it is out wide you still will feel it but not as much if you're playing the ball around with your center mids number two play the ball in the air so whether that's over the top through balls anything like that just makes life a lot easier again trust me on this one and then the final one say if you've literally got two three minutes left or even five minutes left hoof it up the pitch literally simple as that hoof it up the pitch or worst case kick it out of play because there is nothing worse than passing it to your opponent who might be 10 15 yards out from your goal and then they go and score i'd much rather it boot up the pitch and they have to work a chance obviously then from 40 50 yards they have to work it around me rather than give it to them in my own box and give them a free tapping